Senator Baldwin is lying. She is lying to the people of the state. I think that Leah Buchner should be ashamed of herself for using a Marine veteran's death for her own political gain. Senator Baldwin doesn't do her job. She has been missing from her job. She would take us backwards. I think we need to step forward. You know, Scott, how I've often said the worst way to get to know a candidate is to watch their political campaign ads? Yeah, I've heard you say that before a couple times. I think the second worst way to get to know a candidate is to watch a debate between the two of them. (laughs) I'm glad you said second most because I learned a little bit from the baldwin Vukmir debate Monday night. I learned that Tammy Baldwin really does not like Leah Vukmir and that Louis (laughs) Vukmir does not really like Tammy Baldwin at all. I also learned that Tammy Baldwin is playing it safe and confident she's ahead. And Leah Vukmir, who I think won the debate... Oh, easily, yeah. (laughs) Figured she had nothing to lose, and she was passionate and going after Tammy aggressively. And is that enough in a debate that was not televised statewide to shake this thing up? I don't know. I'm going to say, go on a limb here, Scott, and say no. (laughs) Leah Vukmir also was a much better candidate against Tammy Baldwin than she was against Kevin Nicholson in the Republican primary. Yes. Where uh, they both seemed like they were unhinged. Where now she's... uh... She's only partially unhinged now. (laughs) She's 25% more hinged than she was against Kevin Nicholson. Well, today on Center Stage with Milford and Hands, the Wisconsin State Journal's political podcast from the Sensible Center of Wisconsin Politics... We're going to talk about the first U.S. Senate debate, play some clips, and assess where the race stands from here. I'm Scott Milford, the editorial page editor for the Wisconsin State Journal. And I'm Phil Hands. I'm the editorial cartoonist for the Wisconsin State Journal. And we are half of the State Journal editorial board. The better looking half. Okay, so we both agree then Vukmir won the debate. If I was coming to this for the first time, (laughs) not knowing that Tammy Baldwin has served in government for the last 30 years, you would have thought this was her first debate ever. She was very careful in selecting her words to the point of it becoming awkward. Yeah. There were just some awkward It was sort of like Nancy Pelosi. Have you ever heard Nancy Pelosi give an interview where she (laughs) thinks about every word that comes (laughs) out of her mouth before she says it? Tammy Baldwin was almost that bad. Um... I support a woman's right to choose. I don't believe that government should interfere with a woman's health or whether or when she should have a child. Now, Tammy went on to criticize Leah Vukmir for opposing aspects of in vitro fertilization, stem cell research. But compare her kind of stilted, careful way of talking during this debate to Leah Vukmir's more passionate and aggressive tone. I am 100% pro-life. I am a nurse. I can't even imagine not being pro-life. You want to talk about extreme, Senator Baldwin? Extreme is voting for a partial birth abortion. It is the most disgusting thing that can happen, that the arms and legs of a baby are pulled out of their mother, the brain is sucked out, that is vile. And you talk about a woman's right to choose, it's a woman's right to kill her baby. Vukmir also pointed and looked at Tammy a lot during this debate where Tammy tended to just look at the camera. But let's remember, Tammy Baldwin has been up in the polls. Prior to this debate, the Marquette poll showed she was up 11 percentage points. Beyond the margin of error. Well beyond the margin of error. And the latest Marquette poll this week showed very little change. Tammy Baldwin was up 10 percentage points. I will say that if you're a moderate voter and if you're an independent voter and you saw this debate, which I'm not sure how many people saw this debate, (laughs) Scott, I think you and me makes three, you know, (laughs) there was a bunch of people in the audience, but I don't know how many people saw this debate. When I was going home, I flipped all around. I could not find it on the radio because I wanted to listen to it driving home real time. And then when I got home, I kind of flipped around. I couldn't find that TV. I had to go to the web. Yeah, yeah. And then I went out and had tacos and watched it later. But that, I digress. The taco sounds like the best part of the night. As I said, I'll never get this hour back of my life watching this debate. (laughs) So Tammy was very careful and measured with what she said. 
And she's not just ahead in the polls. She's got way more money. As of July 25th, which is the last report, Tammy Baldwin had raised, as uh, Leah Vukmir alluded to, $22.6 million, and she still had cash on hand of almost $7 million, whereas Leah Vukmir had raised $2 million and still had cash on hand of not even a half a million dollars. Yeah, now, that doesn't mean special interest groups won't come in on her behalf, but remember... The guy with all that money didn't spend it on Leah Vukmir in the primary. He spent it on Kevin Nicholson. As I listen to nationwide political podcasts, they're talking a lot about how the Senate is still a race. We don't know if the Republicans are going to uh, maintain the Senate. The Democrats are losing hold of it. But nobody's talking about this Wisconsin race nationwide because I think Baldwin's so ahead in the polls. A lot of the national pundits are not saying this is even going to be a close contest. Yeah, they're talking about North Dakota, Arkansas... West Virginia. Even a little Texas, surprisingly. Beatomania. Um, let's play a couple clips here from the debate. I thought right off the bat, Leah Vukmir set the tone where she went after Baldwin. I, it was on the first or second question, called her a liar. Who are you going to trust to solve our health care problems? A career politician who has spent her life in the halls and the walls of government or a nurse who has spent a career taking care of patients working in hospitals. The fact of the matter is, Senator Baldwin's plan is going to gut everything, everything. She talks about pre-existing conditions. Do you understand what happens under federal law right now? And Senator Baldwin, I don't know if it's because you are ignorant of this or if it's because you um, are, are trying to deceive people on this pre-existing condition issue. But here's the real issue. under. Federal law before Obamacare, people with pre-existing conditions were covered. They were covered under Medicare, Medicaid, and they were also covered under their private insurance through their employer. If Obamacare goes away today, guess what? People will still have coverage for pre-existing conditions. So Senator Baldwin is lying. She is lying to the people of the state. This is the big lie that is being perpetuated across the country about pre-existing conditions. Look, I would fall in front of a truck before I would let people, people go without coverage for pre-existing conditions. Now, for the record, PolitiFact, the Pulitzer Prize winning website that checks the statements of mostly politicians, PolitiFact deemed Tammy Baldwin's claim that Leah Vukmir supports letting insurance companies deny coverage to people with pre-existing conditions. PolitiFact deems that half true. Prior to Obamacare, insurers could refuse to insure people with pre-existing conditions. The catch is that there was a high-risk pool people could get into if they were denied coverage. The catch to that is it was expensive, so uh, a lot of the people with pre-existing conditions were not in the high-risk pool. I was kind of surprised how much time they spent on health care. I think the first seven or eight questions were about health care, and then they talked about every other issue for about two minutes each. And I mean, I guess I get, first of all, I thought the debate people from TMJ4, I want to compliment them. They did really well, I thought, in terms of following up when neither one of the candidates would actually answer the question. Which they never did. No. <laughs> uh, Charles Benson and Shannon Sims, especially from uh, TMJ4, would jump in and try to force them to answer the question. But health care has been touted as the issue in this race, I guess because Leah is a nurse. And, and Tammy Baldwin, Tim- she's made health care one of her pr- career priorities for long before the Affordable Care Act came about. And she was one of the senators that came out in favor of Bernie Sanders. Medicare for all. Right. But still, I kind of feel like most people in Wisconsin get health care either from their employer or from... Medicare because they're retired. And so I'm just not sure that this is on the top of people's minds the way it was when Obamacare was uh, the political football uh, of the year several years ago. Healthcare is full of sob story anecdotes on both sides. You can hear stories about people losing coverage and isn't that horrible. And you hear stories about farmers who can no longer afford to pay their insurance. So it's very emotional. I thought Tammy Baldwin started to get going a little bit when they asked about the Me Too movement. Too many victims, women, have held these painful attacks or assaults for years. We find this also, uh, male victims also. And 
What I think that the Me Too movement has done and said is that we need to speak our truths, we need to tell our stories, and we need to be heard. Um, that means due process. That means due process on all sides. But it does mean that we have to create an environment and a country where it is okay for people to speak out and tell their truths. And I do want to say, especially to the young people who watched the hearing with Dr. Ford, um, I personally found her to be credible and compelling. I believe her. But despite the outcome, I don't want that to silence a whole new generation who I know are scared right now. Vukvir, again, came back strong and pretty aggressively. I believe the Me Too movement was hurt by the proceedings over the course of the last few weeks. And I kind of have to take a deep breath when I hear Senator Baldwin talk about due process because um, I believe it was very important for Dr. Ford to make her statements. And I also believe in the due process of Judge Kavanaugh. But Senator Baldwin, 48 hours after President Trump announced that he was the pick, you came out and said you weren't going to vote for him. You didn't even meet with him. That is absolutely another example of how Senator Baldwin doesn't do her job. I find this whole her line of you don't do that you didn't do your job when it came to the Supreme Court is sort of dangerous for a Republican to be accusing a Democrat of not doing their job, considering the last Democratic Supreme <laughs> Court nominee wasted away because nobody would meet with him for for you know almost a year. Yeah, and Merrick Garland. I, I just find that it's so hypocritical to be sort of you know, accusing Democrats of delaying and trying to stall on the Supreme Court justice when that's precisely what the Republicans did to uh, make sure there was a, a seat available for Trump as soon as he got elected president. Yeah, the hypocrisy meter is, is jumping up there. You know, the other thing I was listening for in this debate was you didn't hear the word Trump hardly at all. Baldwin kept saying the president, this president, the president. And then Vukmir a couple times said President Trump, but she was kind of saying the president too. And I almost kind of wondered if neither one of them wanted Trump in here too much because Baldwin, particularly on the question of trade. And she, she agrees with the president yeah, on and trade. And she made a point of, I agree with this president on trade and sticking up for, you know, American workers and this. And, and she, she seems to be kind of not wanting to make this race about Donald Trump. And then Leah Vukmir brought him his name up a couple times, but not really hardly at all. Like nobody said the word Trump, I don't think, on that whole Me Too conversation. Yeah. And, and you know, Vukmir hitched her wagon to Trump pretty hardcore in the primary to, get, yeah. to, to win the primary. Uh, so I, I would assume she's still going to, you know, be a full-throated supporter of the president uh, throughout the rest of the campaign. But Maybe she just didn't see a whole lot of benefit to, to touting it in this environment. Baldwin mentioned the name John McCain twice. Yeah, she did. Uh, which I think is My more, friend John McCain. <laughs> which I think is more than the times that she said Donald Trump. Yeah. Of course, there she's trying to say, hey, I've been trying to work with reasonable Republicans and across the aisle, and I agree with some of the Republicans on things. You know, she did as flat as I thought she was during most of the debate – she would make these uh, soliloquies for common sense, and she definitely was trying to come off as reasonable. Which isn't bad for somebody who is probably one of the most liberal senators in the Senate, right? I mean, yeah. Tammy Baldwin is re regularly ranked as one of the top most progressive candidates there is out there. Yeah, you know, now that I think of it, did Vukmir ever bring up that she's from Madison? <laughs> no, she didn't. Isn't that in the playbook? We don't want Madison <laughs> politics in yeah. D.C. Yeah, it's usually the first thing. We need Brookfield yeah. politics in D.C., by golly. She did bring up the Hamptons. I wasn't sure about that. Senator Baldwin doesn't understand these day-to-day -day challenges. She is far more comfortable with her friends in the Hamptons than she is at a Friday night fish fry here in Wisconsin. Could you see Tammy Baldwin in the Hamptons? More easily or at a fish fry? I can see Tim Ball at a fish fry. I, I've seen her places where they serve <laughs> fish fries in Madison. So, yeah. But people from outside of Madison don't think that we do fish fries here. Yeah. I mean, I could see Tammy perfectly comfortable in a fish fry in Madison. That's, that's at the Big Ten pub. She would fit in just fine. <laughs> it's incredibly well done. You know, it's 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 the best fish fry I've had, and maybe it's a little expensive, but still affordable, and it's relaxed. You know, I'm not sure she relates the best out at, you know, 
the VFW yeah, in, Brook, or, in, in Brookfield or something? Yeah. I thought Baldwin did well on the part about the guns. First of all, she comes out saying, as a gun owner. As and a gun a, owner. And I still cannot see her shooting a gun, but I well, guess you know, they, she they does. Make those, they make those pink AK or uh, <laughs> AR-15s you can get. You think she has a pink AR-15? I doubt it. I doubt She probably has some sort of little handgun. Yeah, or maybe I, a family hunting, like maybe her grandfather's hunting rifle or something like that. Yeah, and she's probably gone out on a ceremonial deer hunt just to say she deer hunts and that kind of a thing. Well, there's there w- probably a rifle at a deer hunt. Remember the photo of Barack Obama shooting skeet that one time? Yes. That was weird looking. Yeah, it was. It was almost as weird as watching like Donald Trump be nice to children. First of all, I am a gun owner and I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment. But I do believe that the Second Amendment is entirely consistent with some common sense um, I safety measures. I believe we need comprehensive background checks in every instance of purchase, exchange. Um, I believe that we should ban bump stocks at minimum, my goodness. And I believe that we have to go off after straw purchases. Those are when perhaps a legal purchase of many guns takes place and then illegal resales uh, occur. And that particularly helps us get at some of the um, some of the gun violence that we see that doesn't get as much of the spotlight. But I keep asking how many more parklands, how many more new towns, how many more Oak Creeks do we have to have as a society before we will stand up to the NRA and its corporate interests and say, let's go with common sense safety regulation. Unfortunately, my opponent, um, who's been endorsed by the NRA, um, doesn't seem to recognize that the NRA has fallen out of, um, let's say, uh, advocacy on behalf of its members, because most gun owners I know support comprehensive background checks. Most gun owners I know support uh, banning bump stocks. She didn't just say, I hate the NRA. She said they are, they're failing in their mission of protecting gun owners and, and, and rights yeah. and becoming a, a lobbying group for big manufacturers. I think that's a critique that re- resonates with moderates. One of the questions came up was about vet suicides. And uh, this is one of the right bigger away issues. they kind of ignored that and went straight to Toma. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the bigger issues in the race is, is what happened in Toma. That's, you know, people, people have been talking about this for a while. It's, it's kind of a wasn't Timmy Baldwin's finest hour, I don't think, but it's hard to say that it's completely her fault at the same time, too. When I think about veterans, I think about how she turned her back on the veterans at the Toma VA. It is absolutely disgraceful that for months she sat on a report that she and only she had that detailed the extent to which our veterans were being overprescribed opioids. I even have a ethics complaint from one of your own staff members that talked about how You tried to fire her and offered her hush money, taxpayer-funded hush money, to silence her. This is not somebody who stands and is accountable to veterans. And if Senator Baldwin cannot be accountable to our veterans, then she will not be accountable to any single one of us. Tammy Baldwin responded sharply on this point. I think that Leah Vukmir should be ashamed of herself for using a Marine veteran's death for her own political gain. And when I learned about overprescribing across the VA system, but particularly at Toma, I worked with that Marine veteran's family, his widow, his daughter, his parents, to enact Jason's Law. Jason's Law is a bipartisan product of a lot of hard work and collaboration with the VFW, with the DAV, with my Republican co-sponsor, Shelley Moore Capito. I dug in and we have made a significant difference. Tammy Baldwin has one of the families in her TV ad, so. Yeah, that's not, I'm not political sure, at all. <laughs> I'm not sure she's the, uh, Vukmir's the only one politicizing this. When you have one of the families saying, you know, God bless Tammy, she passed this bill after all this happened. And thank goodness for her. And then you have the whistleblower saying he would never vote for her because she sat on this and it didn't, you know, change soon enough. I'm just not sure where a voter's supposed to go there. This was one 
doctor over prescribing some things. I'm not sure it resonates the same way that healthcare does yeah. or or a lot of the other issues being talked about. Before the whole Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearing and vote in Washington, Tammy Baldwin was ahead in the polls. Now post Kavanaugh, Tammy Baldwin is still ahead in the polls. Baldwin is garnering 53% support to Leah Vukmir's 43%. Leah Vukmir is only up one percentage point from the previous month. The conventional wisdom after the Brett Kavanaugh vote is that the right is more energized than it was because of the Brett Kavanaugh fight, whereas the left already was super generized. Uh, the, the left couldn't be any more energized yeah. than they already were. But the latest Marquette poll suggests that the Kavanaugh hearings have not helped Leah Vukmir. The thing is that the right is much better at voting than the left is, just in general. And so whether they're depressed or energized, the right votes at a higher level than the left is going to vote. Mm -hmm. The left needs to be energized to vote. They don't vote if they're not yeah. in love with candidates or not super fired up about stuff. But the right does a much better job of voting. I think you're right, but I think you're really talking about the establishment Republicans. And the people that Leah Vukmir needs to come out are not just the establishment Republicans that handed her this nomination. She needs some of those Trump Republicans who don't vote a lot. But the dang it, they came out and voted for Trump. Yeah, I don't know how big that population is. I think that population gets overstated. Well, Nicholson did very well against her, and he, and he was the more Trumpian candidate and was kind of mimicking Trump. I think there's this mythical person who never voted until Trump came along, and now they're inspired to vote. I think there's lots of people that did that, but I think it's a pretty small minority of the voting population. And my guess is Tammy Boland, probably their campaign did some polling, post-Kavanaugh, pre-debate. And, and they saw that she was doing okay. She's doing fine, so play it safe, Tammy, yeah. which she's very good at doing. She played this very safe. More importantly, which one of these two would you prefer drawing? You've, you've done Baldwin a little bit in cartoons. Yeah, Tammy's got a really long neck, which is kind of fun to draw. She's got kind of a gazelle neck. And I, I've learned that the way to draw Leah Vukmir is I just pretend I'm drawing Truella DeVille from 101 Dalmatians, and I just give her dark hair. <laughs> Find and follow our podcast, Center Stage with Milford and Hands, on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. All the music on our podcast is by Tube Tester. To listen to past episodes of our podcast, go to go.madison.com slash center stage.